Hello everyone, welcome back to this retrospective series on the Primarchs and their legions. I am the Dark Light Emissary, here to guide you through a brief snapshot of each of these legions. We have already gone through six of them, so if you haven't seen any before this, please go back and listen to either any of the other uh, legions we have done so far. And this week's is on the Seventh Legion, the Imperial Fists Legion, and the um, Master of the Seventh, Royal Galdorn. Uh, now, this legion, as a brief overview, uh, they are considered probably one of the toughest legions. Um, they uh, are on par with the Iron Warriors previously discussed as far as fortress building and fortress taking. And that set off a rivalry with Perturabo of the Iron Warriors because Perturabo would like to claim that the Imperial Fists would not be able to take an Iron Warriors fortress. Um, and Rogal Dorn claims that they can. So, you know, there was that rivalry there and perceived favoritism by the Emperor towards the Pipists over the uh, Iron Warriors. And this isn't necessarily a accusation without a lot of evidence. Uh, the Imperial Fists were chosen by the Emperor to help guard him. Uh, so he did have a bodyguard of Imperial Fists with him up until the time he was interred on the Golden Throne. And then that duty was fully taken by the Adeptus Custodes after that. So for a time, the Imperial Fists had quite, you know, that privilege. Uh, Rogal Dorn, um, from the very time he was given command of his legion and found by the Emperor, uh, remained loyal and steadfast to the Emperor and was eventually given the task of building and reinforcing uh, the fortress areas of the Imperial Palace in preparation for the invasion by Horus. But let's take a step back. Um, some interesting history about Rogal Dorn is he comes from a world called Inuit. Um, and that world, there is really nothing known about other than that it was an icy world. Probably somewhat like Fenris, you know, very icy and uh, intense weather. And uh, it produces a similarly taciturn people. And Rogal Dorn is no exception to that is not a Primarch that is known for his emotional range. However, that's mostly his choice. He is a uh, Primarch of absolute control over his, what he wants others to see. He's known for being honest and straightforward in his speech. He will tell you exactly what he thinks of you when he sees you. However, he is more than capable of being subtle and deceitful when he needs to be. And, uh, no one knows this better than Alpharius of the Alpha Legion, who eventually gets defeated by Rogal Dorn in combat due to a plot that Rogal Dorn turns back on the Alpha Legion. And they thought, you know, that Rogal Dorn would be inflexible and incapable of doing that. So that showed that Legion and, you know, anyone else that was watching just what Dorn was capable of. And uh, that's something to keep in mind. He doesn't do some of the tactics of groups like the Alpha Legion, not because he can't or it won't, but because he just doesn't think it's becoming of him or his legion. That's really it with him. Um, whereas other Primarchs, the way they choose to do war is basically kind of all they know how to do in a sense. Like, I mean, all the Primarchs are super late beings, so that's just, but that's just something we've explicitly been shown with Rogal Dorn. Um, especially in a book called The Praetorian of Dorne, which uh, chronicled that plot, the Alpha Legion, against them. Um, and so, uh, Dorne was um, very glacial in his emotion, uh, and we know not much about his home world other than it's that icy, placid, uh, cold place. And uh, But that being said, uh, Rogal Dorne has shown more of a human side than a lot of the Primarchs. Um, he had a uh, adoptive grandfather who, um, after his death, uh, Dorn uh, kept a blanket that had belonged to him. And Dorn still keeps that blanket with him, even into the Siege of Terra. Uh, he wears it about his shoulders. And um, he uh, comes across another uh, character named Kyral Sinderman on the top of some of the battlements and Rogal Dorn is taking a break from commanding. He's been commanding for like weeks without sleep and he's taking a short break and he has 
that blanket around his shoulders. And it was just kind of a funny little moment seeing this normally intimidating being, you know, just kind of taking it easy with a memento from a past life. And uh, it's always fun to see those little things about some of these, uh, you know, insane warriors and tacticians and strategists. So now the Imperial Fists themselves, much like their Primarch, they didn't really have much problem with their Primarch taking over. Um, they all respect uh, their uh, Lord to a great degree. And, um, you know, his doctrines of, uh, you know, like founding fortresses and then manning them was well known. They were also very good at taking fortresses and taking really tough uh, situations. Uh, they often supported the Emperor when he was leading the Great Crusade directly. Uh, so that's something interesting to note. And Horus himself uh, became great friends with Dorne uh, over the course of the Great Crusade. Uh, and Horus respected this legion so much that he had said that there was a fortress manned by the Imperial Fists and his forces were assaulting it. They'd be in an, an eternal uh, stagnation, you know, an eternal um, standoff because they wouldn't be able to fight each other uh, to a complete campaign. Um, so that being said, uh, when Rogal Dorn learned, and he was the first Primarch to learn on the Loyalist side of Horus's treachery, uh, Rogal Dorn did not believe it right away and almost killed the messenger that brought it to him, Nathaniel Garrow of the Death Guard, who was one of the only Death Guard legionaries to survive uh, being massacred by his traitor brethren. Uh, Dorn did not, did not uh, believe it at first, and it took him some rage and soul searching to finally come to the conclusion that, you know, this brother he held in high regard uh, had betrayed the Imperium. Um, so that's something interesting to keep in mind as well with Rogal Dorn. He was very close to the War Master, and it hurt him greatly to see one of the greatest of his brothers in his mind who he, you know, he probably wholesale agreed with his brother becoming War Master over the rest of the Primarchs. And to see him, uh, you know, against his brothers uh, disappointed him and hurt him greatly, I believe, on a personal level. Uh, so, Dorne during the Siege of Terra, he, he and his uh, legion were one of the biggest stalwarts, you know, protecting uh, the palace area and everything around it. They, um, them along with the Blood Angels and the White Scars Legion uh, protecting there. And uh, Dorne, though, eventually, uh, Rangel Dorne goes with both the Emperor and Sanguinius of the Blood Angels uh, to Horus' flagship, and they get split off from the Emperor. And uh, by the time Dorne gets to the aftermath of the battle with Horus, the Emperor is uh, injured beyond repair. And so Dorne. Um, along with some of his legionnaires and um, some custodes bring the emperor back to the golden throne and <clears throat> the emperor gives them some final instructions and then speaks no more uh, so at that point uh, Dorne probably I mean we haven't seen it yet but Dorne probably broke a bit he probably felt he, the thing about Dorne is that he is a very uh he, he, the, a fault of his is he can be overly judgmental and a bit too cold at times. Uh, no greater example of that than something I mentioned before is that when librarians or the Psyker users in a Space Marine Legion were outlawed, Dorn didn't kill them, but he did imprison them in a room, basically, for, you know, years without even, like, really talking to them. And, uh, so he was he was kind of capable of making some pretty harsh judgments at times, and no one got more of a harsh judgment than himself, probably after um, after the emperor's injuries. So I imagine Rogal Dorn, uh, you know, went after the traitors in the scouring after the heresy, with uh, a great deal of rage and gusto behind it. Um, his legion, while they're known for being cold pretty cold and calculating and uh, stalwart in defense uh, if stoked properly to proper rage they are also known for a very fanatical zeal and uh, later on 
uh, when the Codex Astartes is established and the legions are split up, the Imperial Fists, um, one of the groups that splits off from them is called the Black Templars. And this uh, chapter is basically all of the rage, the cold rage of the Imperial Fists distilled and personified into a religious perpetual crusade. Um, these guys uh, wear black armor versus the yellow of the Imperial Fists, and you do not want the Black Templars to come after you. They are a uh, very intense bunch. Uh, one of the first Templars was Sigismund, who was the first captain of this legion. And Sigismund is probably at the very top of the list for the, one of the best duelists and just warriors in all of the legions. He was known by the top warriors of every other legion for just being at the top of being a swordsman. And then during the Siege of Terra, he entered a completely new level, uh, started wearing the black armor, and became one of the first Templars, and then eventually found the Black Templars and continued to uh, uh, protract that uh, mentality long term throughout uh, until his eventual defeat at Abaddon's hands. Uh, Dorn continued to command his legion for a while after the heresy, uh, but during one of the Black Crusades led by Abaddon, uh, Dorn was in a boarding action against one of the ships and that ship exploded so it's presumed he died uh, there was also a vision by uh, Conrad Kurtz of the Night Haunters or Night Lords I should say uh, his other name was Night Haunter I almost said uh, he was prone to visions and he saw a vision among, uh, upon meeting Dorn of Dorn being um, stabbed to death by a bunch of uh, figures in a dark corridor but uh the problem with uh, Conrad's visions is they're often accurate, but not not always. So, you know, he just figured they would always happen. He was kind of a victim of his own stuff, and uh, we will talk more about him, of course, when we get to his legion and him. But uh, so, there's not a lot of hope that Dorn will come back in 40k. Uh, his uh, chapters in his name are all running strong, though. And uh, the, the Black Templars especially are basically uh, non-Codex Astartes compliant. So they're basically a legion of his troops still in 40k era. Uh, no one's no one's brave enough to tell the Black Templars they're not Codex Astartes compliant. Uh, like I said, you don't really want to make them mad. I mean, these guys, uh, I think there was a story recently of them openly killing Primaris black templar that came to join them because they weren't pure-blooded enough like i mean they were, they're just crazy they even killed some custodes that came with the primaris like the black templar are just uh they are a bit more than other space marines and, and that's saying something for space marines in general um if you point them at your enemy they're going to throw bodies at it until they're dead basically and there's a lot of them and they're all very mad <laughs> even by space marine standards um the main chapter of Imperial Fists, though, they follow the Codex of Sardis exactly, and they, you know, they do Imperial Fist things like uh, helping to establish fortresses. If they just, if they attack a world uh, and take it over, they will leave that world with better reinforcements and fortress work than before they took it. So they're kind of like a improve upon what you leave behind instead of a break in and shatter everything and leave sort of group. Um, it's one of the kind of the main uh, focuses of this legion, especially during the Great Crusade. They would invade a world, they would shatter its defenses because that's what they were specialists at. Then they would rebuild those defenses better, and then you know leave garrisoning forces uh, on that world. So they were great improvers upon uh, what they would bring. I still remember in one of the early books of the Horus Heresy novels, Cairo uh, Sinderman is giving a speech and. He's actually got a bodyguard of a couple of Imperial Fists with him on a world. Um, so, they, you know, they had different duties like that where they would protect VIPs um, and um, do aspects of that work versus just doing compliance work and in invasions. Uh, one of the other unique things about this group, uh, about this Legion, is that they have a giant fortress in space called the Phalanx, which came with Rogaldorn from... Uh, 
in which, uh, and it's basically a dark age of technology. Uh, Fortress. It's probably got some secrets in it, you know, and it's been the Imperial Fist's uh, fortress world for a long time. And it moves and has lots of guns on it. It's a, it's basically a small moon that moves around with them as they need it. Uh, so you've got that. Uh, you've also got, um, basically the fists will recruit from many different worlds. They, they don't, it doesn't say anywhere that I read that they specifically recruit from Inuit, but I think they still do. But for whatever reason, that world is, there's not much to go on with it. It seems like if I'm speculating here, it seems like the emperor allows, allowed for a degree of secrecy on Dorne's home world to not really be known to the rest of the Imperium because plenty of other worlds we have a lot more information on. Although if I'm thinking on the, off the top of my head, the ones we don't really know much about origins wise is Rogal Dorn, uh, Horus himself. Actually, we don't know much about Chthonia, which is where he's from. And we don't know much about like where Omegon of Alpharius's twin brother is from of the Alpha Legion. Uh, there's some missing things there and, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a couple of other Primarchs with not knowing much about their world. But then there's plenty of Primarchs where we know a ton about their world and that they openly recruit from there. And even a lot of what the Legion uh, culture comes from is from that home world eventually. Um, you know, each Legion started off with Terran Marines, Marines from Earth, and, uh, you know, cultural tinges from some of the leftover cultures of Earth. But then that was slowly usually replaced by the adopted world of whatever Primarch was the Primarch of that Legion. And so with like with the Imperial Fists, that did not happen as much. It, it says that, you know, they get a lot of the recruitment from Terra itself. Uh, so they seem to fully adopt uh, more of like, a, you know, like we're going to take from the, the capital world because the Emperor blessed it. And uh, but they still seem to have a culture of like uh like that toughness from their world um like i said they uh, dorn kind of had a harshness to him even though he had a bit of humanity to him i'd say as far as primarchs go uh i still remember like one of the like tests he would do with his marines was uh there'd be like a burning brazier with fire in it and uh he would you know have uh his new legionnaires put their hand over it and you know like fight the pain of the fire for as long as they could and Dorn would put his hand in there too with them and then basically like stare them in the eyes to like see how resolved they were against that pain and uh, after the heresy uh, Dorn had a device called a pain glove that he would basically wear that would like he would fight the pain against his entire body basically with it um, and it was kind of done as a like I think a self punishment on himself because, uh, you know, I think he was, he felt like he had to do penance for, again, for his failure, uh, you know, of saving the emperor. Um, another interesting, interesting thing about Dorne and his legion is they seem to have a bit of a durability against chaos. Nothing super explicit given there, but, uh, at one point Dorne during the heresy is fighting a demon, a very powerful one named Samus. And, uh, he seems to, you know, weather the storm just fine against that demon. And, uh, however, uh, Dorne does confront Malkador the Sigilite about not being told about chaos ahead of time. And Malkador is like, look, Dorne, you are tough, but if I would have told you about chaos, you would have tried to study it to defeat it, and it would have defeated you instead. So we chose not to show you and many of the other Primarchs anything about chaos because it's that pernicious of an infection. If you know about it and want to study it, there's no way to get that stain off of you. It's basically what Malkador said. And, um, but Dorne has had shown himself to be perfectly fine against fighting demons and them not really disturbing him that much. He, he was a bit surprised that they existed because he was a big believer in the Imperial truth that the Emperor was pushing, which was, you know, only science exists you know, gods in the warp don't exist. Nothing exists that's magical or uh, fantastical. It's all just clinical. Can we explain it away by science? Dorn is all on board, being the loyal son he was, uh, to agree with that. Yeah, but he was also willing to, you know, 
amend that when he was faced with evidence in front of him. And then he, you know, had the, uh, he had the, um, you know, the uh, insistence to ask Malkador why the Emperor would have hid that from him because uh, Dorne wasn't offended by that, but he was concerned like, you know, I want to help. You know, why wouldn't you tell me so I could help? It was basically his, he wasn't insulted. He was just wondering and he was going to accept the answer that Malkador gave. Uh, he didn't accept it super well, but he did accept it. You know, what else are you going to do? Tell the Emperor it's wrong. Plenty of his brothers did, but Dorne is not one of those to do that. And uh, so, you know, uh, as always, uh, there's a lot for some of these legions. I could go on for a while longer with this one, but I'm going to leave it here with a bit about the Fists and uh, Rogal Dorne. Um, and as always, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe for more. Uh, you can comment if you have any questions about this Legion that I didn't cover, or if you have any comments on anything I got wrong, or just want to elaborate more on that. Uh, I do not want to, you know, make these videos super long at this point. Um, so thank you very much for listening. As always, we will be back again with the next Legion up. And uh, as always, bring your light into the dark places. Thank you and have a great day or night wherever you are. Talk to you soon.